Washington State University, located in Pullman, Washington, out in the Palouse, home of the Cougs. Always underrated, always the underdogs. And the nobody wants this ball. Yeah. Nobody wants it. Poor guys. Underdog, my ass. All my Cougs with me, what you gonna do? Ain't no pressure through the line, ain't no coming through. Cause some pressure off the edge, the homies coming too. See the fear in your eyes, you get a comfortable. QB just drop back, then you know we throw touchdowns. On the road, we turning up and that's way before we don't touch down. Air raid goes super crazy, the whole stadium sold out. Crim zone gets so loud and everywhere we run to town. Defense so turned up, all you hear is that boom boom. Whole team no speed kills, all you hear is that that's them boys! That's them boys! Once again, the Cougs are outperforming expectations, and leading the way is former zero-star recruit out of high school, Cam Ward. He's gone from overlooked to forcing his way into the Heisman conversation. Cam is the most underrated quarterback in the country. And as a Coug grad myself, I had to help share his story. So let's get into who is Cam Ward and how did he get to this point. But before we do, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And give this video a share with a fellow kook. I've also teamed up with Glance LED, who makes these cool LED tracker panels, where you can track live sports, stocks, and much more. Visit glance-led, or you can click the link in the description, and use discount code COUCHGM at checkout for 10% off. Cameron Ward grew up in West Columbia, Texas, which is about an hour south of Houston. His mother said that growing up, he just wanted to play ball. And really, for punishments, she would have to take away whatever ball he was playing with, because that's what he wanted to do. His two main sports were basketball and football. He was on the varsity basketball team since his freshman year, and with over 2,000 points scored over his four years, he set his high school's record for the most points over a career. He said that going into his junior year of high school is when the recruiting started to shift from more so basketball to football. His quarterback coach told him that there's a lot of guys that are 6'3 and can go score 30 points a game, but there's not a lot of guys that are 6'3 with the arm that he has. <laughs> this throw is 50 yards on his knees. He switched to a high school ball in junior high and was routinely throwing 50 to 60 yards, which made him start to think that, hey, I might be able to go somewhere with this. However, at the same time being recruited in high school, he thinks that a lot of teams were sleeping on him because his high school utilized a wing T styled offense, which more so utilizes the running backs, misdirections, motions, option plays, aside from the occasional play action pass. It's not like your standard pro style offense to where there is a balance between passing and rushing. It's typically a run focused game plan to where you're grinding for those yards. But it certainly helps if your quarterback is mobile, which Ward definitely is. He threw for a couple big programs like Texas A&M, but ended up only getting one scholarship from Incarnate Ward. The University of Incarnate Ward is a private Catholic college with its main campus in San Antonio, Texas. And their football program is in the FCS, which is a level below the FBS. Cam first arrived after graduating high school in 2020, and due to COVID, the fall football season was canceled that year, but they ended up playing in the spring instead. When Cam first arrived, he was the third string quarterback. However, due to the delayed start of the season, he was able to put in more work and show the coaches that he deserves the starting spot. So in the spring, he was their starting quarterback, and through the six games they played that year, he was averaging 376 passing yards per game, as well as averaging four touchdown passes per game while completing 60.3% of his throws. His 24 touchdowns on the year led all of FCS football. With those stats, it was no surprise that he would go on to win Freshman Player of the Week, as well as taking home the Jerry Rice Award, which is an award given to the top FCS Freshman of the Year. Prior winners of this award are guys like Cooper Cup in 2013, Chase Edmonds in 2014, Trey Lance in 2019, Cameron Ward won this technically in 2020, and in 2021, Shadur Sanders took the award home. Cam would follow up his award-winning freshman year with a stellar sophomore campaign, as in their 13 games played on the year, he would lead Incarnate Ward to their only outright conference championship. He would record 4,648 yards in total, 47 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, completing 65.1% of his passes. He also rushed for 65 yards with one touchdown. But the amount of rushing yards recorded do not give justice to his elusiveness in the pocket to keep the play alive. He set the career passing touchdown record at Incarnate Ward, 
and he was named the Southland All-Conference Offensive Player of the Year. After Ward's sophomore year, head coach Eric Morris announced that he would be leaving the university, and Cameron Ward announced that he would be hitting the NCAA transfer portal. His priority was to find a team that utilizes a heavy passing offense. Unlike when he was recruited out of high school, there was now a lot of film on him, and especially showing off his arm. This go around, he was ranked as a four star prospect with a 93 out of 100 overall. So, universities flocked in, offering him scholarships, including Indiana, Houston, North Texas, Ole Miss, Virginia Tech, Western Kentucky, Prairie AM, Arizona, and then finally Washington State University. On January 10th, Cam announced that he would be heading to the Palouse to join the Cougs. And a major reason is because Eric Morris, Cam's former head coach, was set to become the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Washington State. Cam would be named QB1, and in his first exposure to the top level of college football, he finished with 3,231 passing yards over 13 games, 23 touchdowns to 9 interceptions, completing 64.4% of his passes, to go along with 58 rushing yards and 5 rushing touchdowns. The Cougs had their ups and downs throughout the year, finishing 7-6, but they had reason to be optimistic with head coach Jake Dickert heading into his third year in 2023, as well as another two years of eligibility for their quarterback, Cam Ward. After the 2022 season, coach Eric Morris decided to leave Washington State University for a head coaching job at North Texas. Morris was the quarterback coach before, but here's Cam talking about some of the adjustments he's made heading into 2023. The coaching that I did was a big coaching switch coming from Coach Morris to Coach Arbuckle, but he really challenged me to be a pocket passer. That's something that we're playing in the NFL one day, that's something that I have to be able to do. Uh, so winning from the pocket, that's something that I'm trying to work on each and every day. So far in 2023, Cam Ward and the Washington State University Cougars have had a strong start to the year with an upset win against number 19 Wisconsin in Pullman. Underdog, my ass! As well as beating number 14 ranked fellow Pac-2 member Oregon State University in Pullman. And just look at the elusiveness that Cam Ward has. And so far through four games, Cam Ward has 1,389 passing yards, which is an average of 347 per game, which is nearly 100 yards per game more than he threw for last year, to go along with 13 touchdowns to zero interceptions and a 74.5% completion rate. He also has 109 rushing yards with three touchdowns on the ground. And when I say he's put himself on the map for the Heisman race, I mean it. He is second overall in total offense with 1,498 yards. His total passing yards are third in the country. He has the third highest touchdowns without throwing an interception. His 13 touchdowns are fourth in the country. And his completion percentage is sixth in the country for passers that have at least 100 attempts. Cook fans already knew about him, but this past week in his matchup against Oregon State, he put the entire country on notice. He went 28 for 34 with 404 passing yards and five total touchdowns against the number 14 ranked team in the country. This won him quite a few accolades this past week. He was named the Walter Camp National FBS Offensive Player of the Week, the Maxwell Award Player of the Week, the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback of the Week, and the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award National Player of the Week. And his head coach, Jake Dickert, has some high praise. We've asked him, you know, really to adjust a lot of things. His leadership, his drop, his arm angles, his progression, staying in the pocket. And he just took the coaching to task. And I give the kids just tons of credit. You know, he could have said, ah, coach, I got this. No, but every step of the way, he craves coaching. He wants to get better. And then when you put the work in in the dark, to see him shine in the bright lights is something that's really empowering for the rest of our team. And I think he's really putting the country on notice. Jake then went on to talk about Cam's ability to evade the pressure. Well, I think it's two things. It's not run ability, it's create ability and escape ability. And I think putting those two things together is what makes him really special. He's an ultra competitor, uh, but I got a chance to see Josh Allen at the University of Wyoming and how he operated and threw, threw the ball. I think Cam has a lot of those same traits. I'm not saying it's exactly there, but man, the way he goes about his work and his business and making plays that are off script. Uh, I was a defensive coordinator for a long time. Those are the things you just can't defend. Yes, sir. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and watch out for Cam Ward the rest of this year. And go Cougs.